Hey guys and welcome back to another video and today we're going to be doing another Missing Monday but before I get into today's case let me just do the usual. My name's Amber and I upload beauty and true crime content. If they're the type of videos that you like to watch then why not hit that subscribe button and come along and join our little family and if you're already part of the family then make sure that notification bell switched on just so you're notified of whenever I upload a video and now we can get into today's case. And for today's Missing Monday we're going to be discussing where is Paige Renkowski. So Paige Marie Renkowski was last seen on May 24th of 1990 she was last seen talking to a man on the hard shoulder of interstate 96 near Fowlerville Michigan her disappearance is one of Michigan's longest missing person cases Paige was born on February 2nd in 1960 in Lansing Michigan she was the daughter of Ardis and Carl Renkowski she also had three sisters Tammy Michelle and Cheryl she loved to skateboard sing and swim and her family described her as a tomboy with a bubbly personality at the time of her disappearance she was actually working as a preschool aide while she was pursuing a degree in early childhood development. She had hoped to work with deaf students and Paige was engaged to be married in November of the year that she disappeared. At 11.30 on May 24th of 1990, Paige drove her mother to Detroit Metropolitan Airport and then she visited a friend in Canton, Michigan to have lunch in a park. Paige had what would be described as a typical lunch date with her friend and then she left the park. She was last seen between 2.30pm and 2.45pm at a liquor store that has since closed down. She was headed westbound on Interstate 275 in Canton where she bought beer that was later found in her car. The store clerk remembered seeing her because she was wearing distinctive multicoloured loose fitting flowered pattern pants and a distinctive necklace. She was supposed to be heading towards her fiance's softball game which should have been a 30 minute drive but Paige never arrived. Paige was driving a 1986 silver cutlass Calais. The car belonged to her mother's employer. Paige was last seen on the shoulder of Interstate 96 96 near Fowlerville talking to a man who was standing next to a maroon coloured minivan. Hours later the 1986 Oldsmobile Cutlass Calais she had been driving was found idling with her shoes and purse still inside. Many people claim to have seen Paige driving west on the A96. One was a woman who said that she might have seen her at a rest stop kiosk. Others included two long haul truck drivers who reported seeing a blonde haired woman who matched her description and they may have passed her when she was driving driving her vehicle on I-96. Many witnesses report seeing Paige and the car that she was driving. Many witnesses also report seeing her talking to a man. Some say that she was talking to two men. Most witnesses report a burgundy minivan park near her car, but others say it was a white pickup truck or a red cargo van or a black truck with an emblem. So there's nothing really solid. Everyone's giving the police different leads and saying that they've seen different things. As one can imagine, considering the passage of time and the fact that many of the eyewitnesses' testimony was, was from people traveling in cars at around 65 miles per hour the information received vary dramatically. The Livingston County Sheriff's Department estimates that at least 80% of nearly 800 tips report that Paige was seen talking to an African American man where others report that it was a Hispanic man. A few witnesses state that they saw a man leaning with his hand on the cutlass and in fact they did find fingerprints and a palm print that they lifted from the car but unfortunately to this day there has been no match on any of the prints. At around 6pm investigators found Paige's car but it was not processed as a crime scene because at the time it was considered as being an abandoned vehicle it was just found idling it looked like it had been abandoned the car was undamaged and the door was unlocked its lights were on the keys were in the ignition and the car was running the driver's side door was closed but unlocked while the passenger side door was closed and locked the vehicle was later towed and someone reported seeing Paige near her car around 3 p.m officers did not respond to the scene however until six o'clock and that's when they learned that Paige was missing and the car was not abandoned around six months after Paige disappeared investigators Investigators received a letter which had a map enclosed and the letter read the information may be a red herring However, I've recently come across some information about Paige that may or may not be true I have tried to verify as much of this information as I could and have found many of the details to be true The author continues to say that the map is the supposed route taken by Paige's abductors and the unsigned letter ends Thank you for your attention to this in November of 
11 the fbi actually decided that they were going to use a map to see if they could it was another lead they wanted to see if it could lead to anything so using the map the fbi and the local police actually excavated a property in conway township but there were no remains found according to an article in the lansing state journal investigators may have read the map wrong there are no reports of further attempts to search the area on june 27th of 1990 workers began to elect billboards which actually had pages of face on them and this was along interstate 96 a total of 25 billboards were planned in may of 2011 the authorities began searching a pond in handy township using a ground penetrating radar a woman reported seeing a pair of cement covered boots there around the time of pages disappearance in may 2013 authorities announced that they would be erecting more billboards featuring page and two other missing women in 2015 her family actually decided they were going to create a gofundme page this was to raise money for cold case teams around the country after years of tireless devotion advocating for missing persons Paige's mother, Ardis, actually unfortunately passed away in December 2017, not knowing what had happened to her daughter. On February 2nd of 2018, there was actually a dual memorial service held for both Paige and her mother. It has now been over 30 years since Paige went missing. Livingston's County Sheriff's Office stated, while investigators continue to work through the disappearance of Paige, according to Deputy Mewer, investigators have no new items to release that have not already been released. The police actually have ruled the case as a homicide even though her body has not been located and no one has been charged in her disappearance wow this is a mind blowing case how did so many people witness her and see her and then she just vanished unfortunately for me i do think that this one possibly has led to foul play i don't think you know there's no signs to say she wanted to disappear or anything like that i do think it's a little bit suspicious that there was a lot of people seeing a man hanging over a car and then obviously they did take prints i hope i hope and pray that eventually those prints will actually be a hit to someone and hopefully they can maybe get a little bit further in the case that would be nice anyway guys i will leave any information regarding page down below so if you've got any information that could be helpful to the case please do not fail to contact that line that will be left down below and i just want to know your thoughts and feelings let me know that down below and i shall see you in the next one thanks so much for watching